Hello, my bear from my pandas. Welcome to Panda Propaganda. I'm your host, Christian Valencia, and today we have some topics to discuss. As you can see, I'm speaking a little louder now because my parents are not here, and I don't want to seem like a maniac while they're in the house, so I'm taking this advantage. Just a heads up for tomorrow, I will be experimenting. Excuse me. I will be experimenting. What I'll do is I... I usually won't post a, uh, an episode Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. I definitely won't be able tomorrow. So I don't know why I said tomorrow. Friday and Saturday, what I'm going to try and do is record the episode before the scheduled time in which I usually do record them, which is uh, usually past 8 o'clock. And then at the time, I'll upload them, and hopefully it'll go well. If it, if it ends up working out and that does help my schedule, then you can expect an episode every for every day except for Thursday. So we'll see how that goes just for this week. And if it works out, then we'll do it. But today is St. Patrick's Day. You could be asking, why aren't I wearing blue? I was wearing green the entire day. It was a very dark poo green, but it was still green. I ended up having to take it off because I went to Muay Thai class. And it's just, it, it was nasty. It was disgusting. It was nasty. I don't know. It was nasty, mate. No, it's Australian. <laughs> I'm not not racist, I swear to God. But today, we will be discussing the history of St. Patrick's Day. Uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, will be pushed back for a third time. And Mortal Kombat, uh, a clip has been released. And in the sports realm, the Chargers sign Matt Failer. So let's get into the history of St. Patrick's Day. Of course, it's... I, I got to do it, got my Oreo Shamrock McFlurry, which by the way, they didn't even they didn't even mix it all the way to the bottom. Now I know how my customers feel when I don't mix their shakes all the way. I'm trying, okay, but it's McDonald's. I wouldn't mix that the entire way if I worked at McDonald's either. So, St. Patrick's Day. It is the day in which we celebrate the patron saint, Patrick. <laughs> I forget the man's name. I'm not that embarrassed. Again, I'm incompetent, so y'all know this. Stick with me. It's said that the Irish have celebrated St. Patrick's Day for over a thousand years, beginning in the 9th and 10th century. Now, St. Patrick was born in Roman Britain. At the age of 16, sadly, he was kidnapped and brought to Ireland as a slave. Luckily, he ended up escaping and ended up living the rest of his life as a free man. However, he did return to Ireland, and he is credited with converting a majority of Irish to Christianity. Now, of course, there was a huge conflict in Ireland over Protestants or Catholics. I don't give a fuck, but that's their thing. So thanks, St. Patrick, for causing that conflict. I'm just trying to be controversial, aren't I? Anyways, St. Patrick is credited with explaining the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, using uh, a clover, a leaf native to Ireland, which is the three-leaf clover. It's not native to Ireland. I don't know why I said that. It's iconic and usually is associated associated with Ireland. There's some here in the States, and I know because I saw them in my elementary school, and I would pick them up always trying to look for a four-leaf clover. And I found one once. I actually did find a four-leaf clover. It was cool, and then my douchemate of a class person, my douchebag of a classmate is what I meant to say, ended up stealing it from me and crushing it right in front of me. I didn't cry, but I couldn't kick his ass either because he was a black belt in, in karate. Yeah, in third fucking grade. I didn't believe him, but he actually had the belt. So he, he, he had to be born like that. And right as soon as they cut the umbilical cord, all right, high jump kicks, go. But no, it wasn't. It wasn't third grade. It was fifth grade. But still, that's impressive considering it takes a lot of time to become a black belt. I'm getting off topic. Anyways, so yes, he's credited with explaining the Holy Trinity and bringing Christianity to Ireland. So he did a lot with the life. Now many affiliate this, and. Rightfully so, affiliate this holiday with the Irish, of course. However, St. Patrick was not Irish. He was born in Britain, by technicality. But, he, of course, he did bring it to Ireland. And what many tend to forget is the first parade for St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Day, excuse me, actually wasn't held in Ireland. It was held here in North America. Now, the United States, as a as a country had not been established yet, it was still under Spanish rule, but 
On March 17, 1601, a Spanish colony held the very first St. Patrick's Day Parade in what is now St. Augustine, Florida. I didn't know that. I found out when I was doing research for this episode. <laughs> but now we know. You know, I'm actually genuinely mad that they didn't. Because I've been eating this thing all day. I didn't want to eat it at once. And Oreo and Shamrock, freaking bomb combination, by the way. And the fact that I've been sugar detoxing just this doesn't help. So I got to restart tomorrow. Tomorrow. But it's just vanilla now. It's just, it's just vanilla. There's no more Oreo or Shamrock. It's in the edges, but like, what's that gonna do, huh? That actually might work. Anyways, now it's over 400 years later, and the United States actually holds the biggest St. Patrick's Day parade, and it's actually only here in the United States, maybe some parts of Canada and Mexico, where. It's a tradition to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. If you don't wear green, then you get pinched. Luckily, I didn't get pinched. None of my family got pinched because, honestly, pinching kind of fucking hurts. It's because it's all concentrated. It, it doesn't hurt as much as a, as a punch because it's kind of spread out a little more. But I pinch hard and I flick hard. I'm getting off topic again. But yes, the United States holds the biggest St. Patrick's Day parade every single year with around 150,000 spectators. Now, it's, it's held every year in New York ever since, I believe, the 1900s, the early 1900s. However, in 2020 and this year in 2021, the parade was canceled due to COVID and is hopefully going to return in... Returned? I cannot speak today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. It is set to return in 2022. Now, that isn't confirmed. Hopefully, it does because I've personally never been a huge St. Patrick's Day cel celebrator. I just, it's never been my thing, but I feel like it's a tradition I should really hop onto. Now, the Irish and the, and the, within the history of the United States is not, hasn't been that positive. When the Irish first came here, they were, how do I put this nicely? Discriminated against, that's not very nice, but no sugar coating, I guess. They were discriminated against because of their weird accents and Basically, their culture wasn't as same as the United States. Of course, it wasn't going to be the same. They're two different countries with different, well, relatively different religions. But the Irish have not had a good history in this country. When they first arrived here in massive numbers, they were, of course, discriminated against. In the media, they were depicted as drunk, violent monkeys, according to one source who I stupidly forgot to write down. Um, and it persisted for God knows how long. However, in 1948, President Harry Truman, who many credit as one of the greatest presidents we've ever had, I'm not going to get into that. It's just one thing he's known well for. President Truman attended the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York. Now, by this time, the Irish have had come into the United States in huge numbers. They made up a hefty portion of the population. And the St. Patrick's Day Parade was... At, at that time, it had, it had gathered momentum. It was huge. Everyone known about it. Yeah, so in 1948, President Truman visited, sorry, attended the St. Patrick's Day Parade. And after that, the stigma against Irish sort of went down. And the Irish started realizing they're being accepted into this beautiful country. And now, here we are in 2021. COVID, parade canceled. But that doesn't mean you can't go get your drink on. Go dye the Chicago River green for a couple days, maybe a week or two, and eat a Shamrock Oreo McFlurry. I don't get how people like just vanilla. I'm going to go off on a tangent a little bit here. Have you ever been to Thrifty's Ice Cream inside of Rite Aid? Black cherry and strawberry ice cream absolutely dick down every single flavor that there is on their menu. Vanilla, by itself, sucks. Doesn't suck. It's just not as flavorful as strawberry or black cherry. Now, if I ever get a milkshake at work, I work at Jack in the Box, you best believe I'm getting a strawberry shake. Chocolate's a bit too sweet for me. Vanilla's plain. Oreo's overrated. Strawberry's just fucking right. And I actually do like the color pink. I don't care what people say. It's actually a really nice color. Vanilla, man, it's just... And it's melting. 
make it up. Mm. So, in today's news, our first category we'll be discussing is movies. Venom, let the carnage be. <laughs> let there be car- carnage, has been pushed back for a third time. Originally, it was set to release in October 2020, but we were in the middle of the pandemic. No one really knew if this, if what we were dealing with was dangerous or not, or how violent it was going to be. So, of course, they pushed it back to June of 2021. As you know, it's not June yet. And it was pushed back again. Announced today, the director or the associates have pushed it back to September 17th, 2021. Now, of course, Venom, Let There Be Carnage is the sequel to the original, I mean, not the original, to the first Venom movie, which was released in 2017, I believe. Um, And honestly, it was a pretty good movie. A lot of people said negative things about it. They didn't enjoy it. But personally, I was actually very fond of the movie. Now, again, I'm a DC kind of guy and Venom belongs to Marvel, but the movie itself was actually produced by Sony. Um... So it's not an MCU canon movie. However, it was still a very, very good movie. I remember watching it with the entire football team. We actually all went to a theater, met up, and just watched the movie. It was one of the greatest times, even though my status on the football team wasn't that uh, positive or existent. But yes, it has been pushed back for the third time. I don't really know how to talk about this because there's not much to say. Woody Harrelson, actually, will be playing Carnage. If you don't know who Woody Harrelson is, pause and go watch Zombieland. Oh, wait. Three, two. It's fucking good, right? Now, again, I hate zombies. I'm not a zombie type of guy. But Woody Harrelson's a fucking legend. Um, Towards the end, actually... It was an after. It was a during credit scene. It was shown Eddie Brock, which Tom who Tom Hardy plays. Eddie Brock is obviously Venom. Going to interrogate a prisoner. That prisoner ended up being Carnage, the another symbiote, another Ven- Venom symbiote, and one of Spider-Man's arch nemeses. <sighs> Again, I haven't been updated on the Spider-Man comics ever since I was ten years old. But I was very excited for this movie to come out, and now it's being pushed back again, and I kind of forgot about it up until today. But hopefully, this will be the last time it'll be pushed back, and we'll be able to, you know, not be disappointed, because it's being pushed back almost a year. So, we'll see. Second on our list is a Mortal Kombat exclusive scene. Now, just a heads up. I gotta sneeze. That's a burp. Just a heads up. <laughs> Sorry. They there was talks about a 13 minute release, the first 13 minutes of the actual movie in Mortal Kombat, of Mortal Kombat, excuse me. However, my incompetent ass couldn't fucking find it. So, if you can find it and watch it yourself, congratulations. More props to you. But that's why I'm here, so you don't have to. But I did watch the trailer, and may I say, this Mortal Kombat movie looks way better than the one from the 1990s, I believe it was. Raiden actually looks way way better. The movie includes some of the most notable Mortal Kombat characters, like Liu Kang, Sub-Zero, Scorpion, Sonya, uh, Jax, I think his name is, and so many more. Now, so far, my only complaint with the movie is I don't like how Sub-Zero and Scorpion look. That's not to say that they don't look badass. I just think, and I swear this is the actual reason I don't like it, the masks that cover their mouth are just way too loose. I swear that's the only quarrel I have with this movie at the moment. Of course, it's not perfect. I think once I do see it, there are going to be some things, some other things I don't like about it. But so far... It looks really badass. It <laughs> looks very interesting. And of course it follows the actual plot of the Mortal Kombat video games. Throwing in a little more in there. And overall it looks like a fantastic movie. It looks to be better than the original that was released in the 1990s. Because 
I think the status quo is any movie that is based off a video game is going to suck balls. I said it. The Mortal Kombat 4 movie is set to be released April 16th, which yesterday is just a month away. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Now, personally, I don't know if it's going to be released in theaters because theaters are slowly opening up, but it's a month away, so maybe we, we would have made a lot of progress by then. Or it's going to be released on a streaming platform, maybe a platform that is subscription only. Only time will tell. And our second category is sports. And our last article of today's episode is Charger Sign Matt Feiler. 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 Feiler? I think it's Matt Feiler. I apologize if I'm butchering his name. I don't like butchering names. I think names are important and I, I hate doing it. So someone let me know if I said it right. <laughs> now, Matt Feiler, I'm just going to say Feiler, was a left guard. Well, left guard, I think. He was on the O-line for the Steelers for over 90 games in the six seasons he played. Recently just signed with the Chargers yesterday on the same day as Corey Lindsay did. He signed to a three-year deal um, in comparison to Corey Lindsay's five-year deal. Corey Lindsay, even though Filer has signed, Corey Lindsay is still the highest paid center in the NFL. So, you know, congrats to him, I guess. <laughs> but Matt Filer is now signed with the Chargers. And in his stint with Pittsburgh, he helped the O-line achieve the least amount of sacks in the entire league for three consecutive seasons. Now, of course, in the 20-21 to 21 season, the Steelers absolutely dominated their first games. The first 11, they went undefeated, and then from then on, it just went... It, it got shittier than a toilet on Taco Tuesday. It went bad. They lost to the Jets. The first, jet, the first win the Jets had were against the Steelers. Let that sink in. And the Jets sucked so bad that they couldn't even win. They couldn't even lose right. So. It's the future of America, folks. I'm kidding. But this is just, this is good news. Every time the Chargers are in the news, it's something good. They recently just signed Michael Davis. I think that's his name. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, back to, I believe corner and again the chargers are looking extremely great and i'm excited that will complete today's episode ladies and gentlemen if you haven't already go follow the instagram at underscore panda propaganda underscore lowercase on one word and not tomorrow not thursday but friday we'll see how it turns out and i will see you then deuce deuces <laughs>